the solar magnetics, the solar flare periodicities, creates this hexagram, 64 codons of the DNA in the I Ching. Well, the point of this matrix has to do with has to do with this notion that in order to inhabit time, we need to properly embed ourselves in the pattern of time. And this brings us to the subject of this little part of our conversation, which is called Just East of Eden, the Battle of the Brothers. And the Battle of the Brothers started actually back in the last section where we were talking about Enki and Enlil. Enki, as you recall, had later called himself Adonai, and Enlil called himself um, Yahweh. Enki's son, uh, Thoth, may have been identical with Hermes and Quetzalcoatl and Tutankhamun, if we're to believe Cotterell's scholarship in Tutankhamun prophecies. So, what we, the situation of the two brothers was that the Orion group had been ruling with terror this whole group of the inhabitable planetoids, and uh, so there was resentment on Sirius and Pleiades where the regent was named Ea or An. Ea, for whom Earth was named, became the father of, uh, of the Anunnaki, An's kids, Enki and Enlil. And Enki's son was Thoth, who purportedly was from Rigel in Orion. And so the regent Sirius, the regent from the Syrian sector, uh, planted the seeds of explosion and rebellion, the way out of the matrix here, purportedly by basically having tantric relations with Sa-Ra, Sarah, whose kids became Joseph and Benjamin, whose kids became Jesus and Magdalene, and you had Holy Blood, Holy Grail, which was the squirting in of high-level 11th dimensional Patal, the Pata, DNA, which was bird tribe DNA, which had the potential to create the squirt gun out of here. The principle that became the, the flagship of the difference between Enki and Enlil was the issue of the calendar. And, well, there's lots of pieces of the puzzle. Enki and Enlil were of different mothers by the same father. And Enki was entitled, for some reason due to that mother ship, which I think has to do with Patal, to be taught by his father how to bring humans back from the dead, which he then used, whereas Enlil was not. And this became a subject of ultimately their understanding the principles of ensoulment and wormholes through the speed of light in general. So what happens was that Enki wanted the Takadama, the Borgs, the, the Golem, Adam and Eve, to be taught the true alphabet, the true psychokinetic symmetry operations to spin yourself through light speed, which is what alphabet is, to fold spin density property is to implode it, is to go through light, light, light speed, which is to say to symbolize is to embed. And so to get yourself embedded so you can screw yourself through light speed, you need to be able to enact fractally in your symbols and you need to be fractal in time as well as space. So the way Jose Argoyas depicts that, and I just enjoy this little picture on Jill Purse's book, The Mystic Spiral, but in Jose's work, he actually shows that event histories in time line up beautifully when arranged on a spiral. So you see that if you were to draw a line through the spirals to center each time, you'd create, you'd connect common events in history. And he's shown that time itself is spiral or fractal. There's a, a deep uh, mystery here if you want to sort of have a koan for the moment where uh, Plummer, the theosophic author, in the book Mathematics of the Cosmic Mind shows that the summated total of the angles of the nest of all the platonic solids called the lesser maze or the star mother or the Merkaba, the summated total of all the internal angles of the platonic solids in their nest equals the number of years in precession. What does that mean? Well, in the pyramid if you look at symbols their angular difference between each other is the amount of time between what they predict uh, in prophecy. And so it reflects back to the deep understanding that, in fact, relative spin 
is our only definition and measure of time. So angular measure is time measure. And when angular measure becomes recursive, the faster than light speed through time. If you went faster than speed of light, you could be here before we get here next year. That's how you go into time. The faster than light inhabiting of the wormholes of time becomes inhabitable. Another way to see that is if event histories are not arranged spirally and fractal, then time and angels bleed. This is actually the Haophanum, the bird tribe, the Adawi, the uh, Valnapa, have bodies is because they inhabit, inhabit the fabric of time. And so when this childishness of the Montauk time travel uh, tears at the fabric of time, this, is, uh, uh, this needs to be repaired. Otherwise, there are these time implosions that destroy whole philo do patterns of soul groups inhabiting through history. So repairing the fabric of time was one of the great Templar agendas and continues to this day. So the lovely little squabble after Enki gets booted out of Egypt on, as, under the name Hermes, or I guess it was Thoth, Enki's son, gets booted out of uh, Egypt under the name Hermes for trying to teach a solar calendar because Enlil got pissed because that might make the kids psychokinetic and then the kids might be more powerful than their dragon parents. So Enki, uh, rather Thoth, goes to South America and changes his name to Quetzalcoatl and you have this whole serpent birdman thing, shtick, and teaches the solar calendar which became the Mayan calendric. Now you have Jose Argoyas, dear Pope, please retract your calendar, it is a mistake, right? You know, which does get to a little bit of the heart of matter that if the children cannot properly assemble themselves with respect to the periodicity of the fire of the sun, they will not then be able to inhabit the sun. It's not a matter of Mayan day keepers and counting the number of days backwards. That's almost trivial. It's okay. The issue is simple. Look at the pattern of the solar flare symmetries, how it is the map for all genetic fertility scholarship like Maurice Cotterell, whom I admire. And you use that map of solar fire and you inhabit the sun. And that's what this group, this family of solar shamans is beginning to teach us. There are women that see through the sun and they can steer us there if we will let them. You close your eyes, you do this soul group work, remembering the spin path back into your mother's egg. You then get a perfect common fractal point of reference point of consumed perspective, maximum leverage by which advanced tetrahedral fire breath, the true Merkaba work, e pluribus unum, many can become one and the whole soul group can then can travel as a group and use their collective soul force, uh, attention force, as the arrow to the squirt gun penetrating the egg going through the sun. And as Yuri Geller measured, Radioactive half-life decreases in the presence of focused human awareness. If you can't inhabit radiation, you can't inhabit the sun. Restoring the fractality of an atom is what eliminates radioactivity because fractality of charge is what created the gravity, which is the fra fabric which holds an atom together. Self-reference, self-embedding creates gravity. Creating that force in focused collective human awareness is our possibility of being a slingshot through the sun. Inhabiting the sun's fire is the issue of rapture of our day and the only way our children will survive. So that's the story of the two brothers. And I was born, by the way, just east of Eden. <laughs> Thanks very much.